I'm going to go over what to expect from Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome to Guardian Watcher. So, today, I wanted to go over everything that we can actually expect from Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. Warning, there are possible spoilers ahead, so if you don't want any spoilers, then you may click off the video now. But, if you don't care about spoilers, then continue to watch. You have been warned. All sources for this video will be in the description box below. Before we get into the video, if you guys haven't already entered into the Destiny 2 Forsaken giveaway for the month of June 2019, then sub to the channel, turn on notifications, follow me on Twitter, and let me know what types of videos you guys would like to see on the channel. Also, a link to the giveaway will be in the description box below as well. Now, Destiny 2 is constantly evolving, and in its right, it has become what it is today, an action MMO. Shadowkeep is the next chapter in the Destiny 2 franchise and will also be the start of Season 8 for D2. It will be a standalone expansion which means that you don't need to buy or play any of the previous DLC in order to play Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. Like Destiny 2 Forsaken, Shadowkeep will have its own Year 3 Annual Pass which will run on the 3 DLC system. At the time of this recording, the names of those DLCs are yet to be known. However, the last DLC will begin the opening for Destiny 3, which a few months ago was already confirmed is in development. Destiny 2 Shadowkeep brings us Guardians back to the moon, specifically to the Dark Below, from which we haven't been to in a very long time, technically since Destiny 1, and since then, a lot has changed. Now, why we weren't monitoring the moon after the Hive took it over in D1 is still mind-boggling to me. But Bungie has confirmed that there has been a lot of changes to the moon, and it is now going to be twice as big. Shadowkeep will bring a little bit of a twist as old enemies will be resurrected by the darkness. These, quote, nightmares are a manifest of a guardian's past, end quote. We'll see the return of Eris Morn, who went into hiding after the Cabal attacked, and we can actually blame Eris because she is the one who unleashed the madness from which the events of Shadowkeep have transpired. But Shadowkeep doesn't just tell the story of the world, but also what happens to you as a guardian. We'll see old enemies come back like Zydron the Gatelord, Tanix the Scarred, Fogoth the Untamed, Alakul the Darkblade, Omnigal Will of Crota, Skolos Kel of Kells, Atheon times Conflux, Crota Son of Oryx, Oryx, the Taken King, Nocris, Herald of Zol, and Dominus Gaul, just to name a few. With this new entry into the Destiny universe, we can expect all new gear from weapons to armor, shaders, ships, sparrows, more stats, and stats will actually matter again in Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, as well as more player customization for your character like habits and game modes into the game. But with all of this new gear, we can also expect character RPG to go more in depth, which means better storytelling, new and returning NPCs, armor, perks, and mods will be also be getting a revamp on how they actually work. Bungie is calling this change Armor 2.0, which allows a player to move stats and perks from one piece of armor to another piece of armor. This will give you the ability to look the way you want, but also having the perks on the armor that you want as well. Artifacts are also coming back to Destiny 2, but in a totally different way. In Destiny 1, the majority of the artifacts that we wanted came from the Iron Lords because they had the strongest bonuses. In Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, a whole new variety of options for a single artifact will be given to us. These artifacts will have tiers, and then the closer that you get to an end of a tier, it'll make the artifact feel more like an exotic. So far, Bungie has only shown us seasonal artifacts, but it is currently unknown if normal artifacts that aren't seasonal will be available as well. One cool concept that Destiny 2 Shadowkeep will be introducing is finishing moves for each subclass. And I actually think that this is a cool concept, but unless there is going to be like a variety of finishing moves per subclass and not just per class, then I'm sure that a lot of Guardians and myself aren't going to be really impressed because it'll just get boring seeing the same finishing move over and over and over. And at that point, we just want to kill things and move on. 
As for weapons, we will definitely be able to see new weapons as well as new pinnacle weapons in Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. We can expect to see a new exotic heavy bow that gives a knockback effect to an opponent, an exotic trace rifle that when shot at a target it'll create a critical spot, and there'll also be an exotic hand cannon that is more like a one-handed sniper. Now looking at the stats for that specific hand cannon, they aren't really impressive except for the impact stat, so you will definitely have to be at close range in order to do good damage. And at the moment, since this hand cannon is still in development, it lights you on fire, which obviously is never a good thing. But with a lot of power, it needs to have some sort of setback. And when it comes to armor and weapons, the max level will be increased to 800. With Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, it will bring a renewed focus on PvP. You can expect things like new maps and new playlists. Crucible Labs will get an update with even more D1 maps and game modes as well as an update to the current playlist and how they actually work. And while playing the story of Shadowkeep, we will actually be able to go through the First Light D1 Crucible map. This expansion will be setting the foundation for what the Crucible is supposed to be going forward and I feel that with Bungie having the development freedom away from Activision, they can actually do just that. It just sucks that it's taken this long just to get to this point. Sandbox changes for Shadowkeep will continue to go from season to season, and unfortunately, there will be no PvE to PvP split. What this means is that when you get a weapon, let's say in PvE, it will act and do the same damage that it will in PvP. Shadowkeep will bring a plethora of new content in the form of new story missions, new vehicle missions, new dungeons, new strikes, and new raids. The first raid for Shadowkeep will take place in the Black Garden, which is in Meridian Bay Mars. However, at the recording of this video, I am not entirely sure if the raid for Shadowkeep will be released on the same day or the same week as Shadowkeep. Whenever that information is given, then I will definitely let you guys know. A new light is Bungie's way of getting new guardians into the fight without having them spend countless hours or money. It starts the guardian off just as it did in D1 at the Cosmodrome, waking up and doing the first mission. After completing the mission, it'll bring you to the new Destiny 2 tower and new guardians can jump right into any of the year 1 Destiny 2 content if they choose to. Now, this content includes the campaigns such as the Red War, Curse of Osiris, and Warmind. But you do not have to do any of the D2 Year 1 content to be able to play with your friends in the current expansion or season. The Guardians of A New Light will have access to roam around every planet. They'll be able to do every strike, participate in PvP, Gambit, the D2 Year 1 raid like the Leviathan, and much more. But destinations will be unlocked over a small amount of time, and this will be a lot less time if you didn't have New Light. Pretty much, you'll do a couple of missions here and there, as well as a few bounties, and then other destinations will start unlocking, including the moon. Now, this small progression will help ease new players into the world of Destiny. That way, they're not overwhelmed. As of the recording of this video, players of New Light will start their experience at power level 750. However, New Light isn't just for new guardians. It's also for veteran guardians who decide to make a new character. And what makes New Light even better for new Guardians is that it's totally free. However, if you download New Light and then you wanted to experience the full flow of Destiny 2 Forsaken, then it will be available for you to purchase. One of the most or probably the most important feature when Destiny 2 Shadowkeep is released is the ability to cross save your gameplay, that way you can play on whatever platform you want. Now. Cross save is not the same as cross play, and let me explain the difference. Cross save allows you to go from one platform to another. For example, if you're playing Destiny 2 Shadowkeep on a PS4 and your buddies are playing on an Xbox One or a PC, then you can save your progress in game and then go to the same platform as your friends and play with them with the same account that you just saved. All gear, weapons, and currency will also be saved as well. Crossplay is entirely different. Crossplay allows you to be playing a game on a platform of your choosing, we'll say Xbox One for this example, while playing with others on a different platform like a PS4. Destiny 2 Shadowkeep will only have cross save, 
and not cross-play. But with that said, Destiny 2, including Shadowkeep, will also be available for Google Stadia as another platform. So instead of having three platforms, i.e. the PC, PS4, and Xbox One, you'll have four, including the Google Stadia. And I hope that actually helped you guys distinguish the difference between cross-save and cross-play. Now Bungie has claimed that they wanted to release cross-save when Destiny 2 was released, but wasn't able to do so due to, quote, capital R reasons, and many of those reasons have disappeared, end quote. Which is pretty much saying AKA Activision was holding them back. But it looks like we'll actually be getting cross-save when Destiny 2 Shadowkeep is released, and we'll probably have to activate it on Bungie.net. One more important factor is that with the release of Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, the whole, quote, exclusive content, end quote, whether it be weapons, activities, etc., that is specific to one platform will no longer be a thing. Now, Luke Smith has said, quote, the vision is a single community of players, end quote, and this will allow all players of Destiny 2 Shadowkeep to experience the game at the same time without one platform having an advantage over another, especially with cross-save coming to the game. But that does not mean that there will not be exclusive content at all for Shadowkeep and moving forward. It just means that every platform will be eligible to get that exclusive content at the same time. Now, this fall, Destiny 2 will be coming to Steam for the PC. What this means is your entire account will be able to transfer from Blizzard to Steam free of charge, and you will not have to buy Destiny 2 again in order to do this transfer. This includes any licensing, any DLC that you bought, anything for Destiny 2 that you had on your Blizzard account will be able to transfer to the Steam account. And Shadowkeep will be released solely on Steam for PC users. So you will no longer be able to play on a Blizzard account. Now let's talk pricing. Destiny 2 Shadowkeep is only $34.99 for the standard game, $59.99 for the Digital Deluxe Edition, and $149.99 for the Physical Collector's Edition. Only the Physical Collector's Edition needs to be purchased from the Bungie Store though. I'll go in depth with what all of the editions of Destiny 2 Shadowkeep entail in another video. And Destiny 2 Shadowkeep will be available to play on September 17th, 2019, and as of right now, it is available for pre-order on your platform store of choice, destinythegame.com, or at the Bungie Store. When more information comes out about Destiny 2 Shadowkeep later on this summer, I will definitely be covering it for you guys, so stay tuned. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to watch these videos as well. And if you are a Destiny content creator or Destiny streamer, then go ahead and check out Destiny 2 Destiny Underground on Facebook. There, you can meet tons of cool people as well as have a place to post your videos or streams without issues. Just follow the rules. I'm Reckless, and I will see you guys in the next video.